Yes, Senator Purdue, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to echo the frustration in, uh, that you're hearing this morning. I, uh, uh, because of the intransigence of this administration, it seems to me that, that you know, all of a sudden we're in an era where our allies don't trust us and our enemies don't fear us. You know, as it was mentioned earlier, the Ukraine uh, unilaterally gave up over a thousand uh, nuclear weapons uh, on the assurance that um, uh, you know their national security would be protected. NATO and the U.S. was behind that. Last September, the president, with President Poroshenko by his side, President Obama promised to help Ukraine build up an effective security force to defend themselves from aggression. And yet here we are today talking about uh, more delays in terms of getting that support. Kurt Volker, a former U.S. ambassador to NATO, has written with a new, that a new cease, this new ceasefire amounts to an instant, and I quote, institutionalization of a frozen conflict inside Ukraine along the lines of Abkhazia in South Ossetia in Georgia and Transnistria in Moldova. This is exactly what the Kremlin wants, end quote. Admiral, I, I've just got a couple of questions. Do you think that Putin's objective is to create a frozen conflict like the ones in Georgia and Moldova? And if so, what would be our response to that? Senator, I think his objective is to keep Ukraine destabilized so, so that doesn't uh, effectively join the West. Um, he is threatened by progressive democracies on his borders, in my opinion, uh, and he is uh, trying everything he can to prevent, uh, prevent that from happening. Uh, in response, as uh, Secretary Luland and Secretary McKeon have pointed out, it, we have implemented a wide array of initiatives uh, focused on generating pressure, economic, diplomatic, and military, to try to um, force the Russians to stop this behavior and respect the territorial integrity of Ukraine. Thank you. And from a strategic perspective, uh, in recent months, Russia's kidnapped an Estonian intelligence officer on Estonian soil, warned Latvia of unfortunate consequences for its alleged mistreatment of ethnic Russians, forced Sweden to reroute a civilian airliner recently to prevent a collision with a Russian military jet, and flown strategic bombers over the English Channel, actually, and sent unannounced, uh, unannounced formations of military aircraft into European airspace. I'd like to follow up on Senator Shaheen's question about Article 5, but do you believe Putin's strategic objective is to determine, uh, to undermine the credibility of NATO's guarantee to secure all of its member states? I do. I think uh, President Putin would like very much to undermine uh, the NATO alliance, and uh, we are working very hard to communicate to him the solidarity of that alliance and taking steps to emphasize and illustrate that solidarity. Can you talk specifically uh, about what's being done by NATO in uh, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania with, in regard to that? Well, as mentioned a moment ago, the, um, the reassurance measures being taken by NATO do include, and the United States is part of this, obviously, uh, rotating forces through the Baltic states, uh, engaging those states in terms of uh, uh, exercises and training and assistance, uh, as well as facilitating uh, additional aircraft being stationed in those countries. Uh, NATO, uh, NATO AWACS are flying over Eastern Europe to, to a greater extent. Ships are in the Baltic and the Black Seas to a greater extent. All of this holistically is designed to, to bolster and underline the uh, Article 5 commitments. Thank you. And one last question, uh, Secretary Tului. Um, we've said that, and, and all three, all four of you have said in different ways that uh, the solution here is diplomatic, economic, and military. Um, my question is on the sanctions. Um, you know, that they don't have a consumer, Russia doesn't have a consumer economy, basically. They've got an energy economy. Um, their banking uh, sector uh, can be hit, and also their military arms uh, manufacturing sector. Can you speak uh, in a non-classified way about what needs to be done uh, from the sanctions perspective that can actually get his attention at this point? Senator Perdue, thank you for that question. Um, the, the sectors that you mentioned actually have been targeted through the sanctions. Um, both the defense sector and the financial sector have been subject not only to what we call sectoral sanctions, which restricts the ability of companies in that sector to borrow money, to tap the capital markets which needed for them to develop their businesses, but also in particular in the defense sector, there have been individual companies listed uh, and subject to asset freezes. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Those sectors are very important. They are part of the reason why uh, the sanctions have had the effect that they've had on the Russian economy, uh, with the currency depreciating by more than 40 percent, 
the economy expected to contract this year, inflation rising to over 17%. So, um, so those sectors are very important. They've been part of our tailored sanctions program, uh, and these are the effects that we've seen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.